Hi, it's Kip K from Make Magazine and another explosive weekend project. You know, I don't know about you, but I take my vehicle for granted. I hop in, start it up, drive off. I never really think about everything that goes on inside that engine. Well, this week, we're going to make a great project that explains what happens inside of an internal combustion engine, and we're calling it Explosion Engine. This week, we're using power tools, the Dremel, the drill, and the skill saw. You'll find the explosion engine in Make Volume 13. Now, this is only going to be a general overview of the build because it's quite involved and truly is a weekend project. You can download the PDF for step-by-step -step instructions. I cut out the main support pieces from PVC trim board. Now the crank bearings are patio door roller bearings and they're installed in front and rear bearing supports. A one half inch galvanized pipe will be our crankshaft. The two inch PVC cylinder is held in place by two saddles that are mounted to the front support and fastened to the base using corner brackets. Okay, we built our crank bearing assemblies and our crank saddles and we put everything together. Uh, now it's time to build the crankshaft and the, uh, let's see, we've got the crankshaft and also our uh, cylinder and uh, the rest of the components. So let's get to work. Now I cut an exhaust port in the cylinder with my Dremel and drilled holes for our spark plugs, which are drywall screws. Our power source is a grill igniter wired to the spark plugs and does shoot a good spark across the plugs. A wood dowel, 2-inch PVC cap, and tension pin make up our piston and connecting rod. Pipe flanges are mounted to our galvanized pipe with adapters in the front and back, and then the connecting rod is attached to the front flange. Now our air source is a 12-volt compressor, and it gets mounted to the back of the front support. I installed the igniter and wiring in a hobby box to keep it and my hands safe, and drilled two holes for our air and fuel. And now, for the first attempt at our explosion engine. And here we go. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken the top cap off and uh, checked inside to see if I was getting a spark and I uh, made a slight adjustment to my uh, spark plugs, my uh, screws here, and I'm getting a spark now, so I'm going to put it back together and uh, hope we get an explosion engine. <laughs> okay, well, I, uh, when I took the cylinder head off, I neglected to screw it back on and uh, it basically blew it to smithereens. So, we have another cylinder head that we are going to screw on tightly and uh, give it another go. Oh, and uh, safety glasses. I'll be wearing safety glasses this time. Okay, here we go. One more try. I've changed the camera angle a little bit so you can see the... Uh, connecting rod and the crankshaft, and if all goes as expected, we should get some rotations out of this when the explosion engine does what it's supposed to do. So, let's get our air mixture going. And our fuel, here we go. Well, as you saw in our second attempt, uh, it blew the cylinder completely out of the frame and uh, mangled up our little inflator needle. So that's gone. We replaced that. And I also put a lag bolt uh, about this long through the cylinder and into, the, uh, into one of the supports here. So uh, we're going to give the explosion engine another try. Well, there you go. We got it after some tweaks and minor adjustments, but hey, we're building an engine. We got the rotations that we needed out of it, and if we were to continuously supply spark, fuel, and air to our cylinder, this would continue to rotate, just like it does in your car dozens of times a second. So there's your explosion engine, and we'll see you next time.